All right, we are on the program, The Core Confidence Life. I am your host, Dennis, broadcasting to you right here in New York City. And um, if you have not subscribed to this channel, I'd like you to do so by hitting the subscribe button. On today's interview, we are talking about getting over, moving past, um, overriding anxiety and moving into abundance. So our guest on the program, Jay Suknanen, is an author and a health and wellness guru, and he is going to talk to us about anxiety, what that is, where it comes from, how to move past it, and how to move past it and move into more of an abundant way of living, where you could be uh, financially independent and physically and mentally and spiritually sound. So stay tuned, coming at you, let's override anxiety and move into abundance and freedom. Core Confidence Life. 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 All right, we are on the program and we are talking to Jay Suknanen and he is a life coach, a health and wellness guru and author and everything like that. What's going on, Jay? I'm good, brother. Yourself? How you doing, Dennis? Um, doing well. Good to have you on the program. Um, I've known you for several years and I've watched you grow and turn into the life coach, health guru, and the man you are today. So it's good to be able to interview you on all that. Yeah, I'm excited. I've always liked your energy. You've always been an upstanding person. You work hard. So it's nice to be around um, like-minded people. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So we are on the program. We're talking about uh, mental health, anxiety, depression, things like that. You know, stuff that you got a book about, right? So just before we dive into the topic, tell everybody a little bit more about who Jay Suknanen is. So, I don't know, I'm human. And I start off with that, I'm human just like everybody else. We're all one. Um, I'm born and raised in Brooklyn, Bensonhurst. I lived in Trinidad for a while where my family is from. I, I believe in that we could change the world for, to make it a better place just by working on ourselves and creating an internal inner peace, which would create world peace. Um, I also believe in, you know, creating my wealth so I could actually fund the changes I want in the world. Um, and there's just so many great things that I see. I actually was, I, I had that, I went down both paths, right? So I went down the good path and the bad path. Um, not even a bad path, just bad association, bad choices, uh, and bad influence. So that's kind of like where we went down and my teenagers from 15 to 17. But before that, I was an A student, worked hard, tried to help my family as much as I could. I uh, graduated high school on time after that 17-year-old. Uh, went to college, did really well there. On that journey, I realized I could still be a doctor, which was my childhood dream. That really got me super excited about life. I started working hard, graduated the highest honors of my first college, went to my second college, studied biochemistry, there I met my friend that was a life coach. He asked me, Jay, you know, uh, can I do this? Can I uh, try this on you? And I said, okay. And he said, what's your purpose in life? And I answered it, but I kept it moving from there. I was going to be a doctor, so I was super focused. Went into EMS. I had already volunteered over 500 hours in the hospital. I worked with, I was working with Buddhist monks as well for about four years. I realized I didn't want to be a doctor while I was working on the ambulance. I became a nutritional therapist, personal trainer, because I realized meditation and the health and wellness could actually heal people before they even get sick. I also then decided to get into real estate because I wanted to find out how to fund my purpose in life. So my purpose I had written down was to help join the world and work to end suffering, making sure everyone has food, water, shelter, clothing, further than that to holistic health care and education. I want to help inspire people and motivate the young. And that, that was the journey I was on. I was hitting those goals. And I realized I had to make sure I was happy. So I had to fill up my cup 
and charity starts at home. And actually, charity at home is what fills up my cup. I like to make sure people are good and that we have a good life. So when I go out and help people, we have a solid foundation. So now I'm a business owner. I'm putting out the second book. And that's pretty much it. That's my life in a nutshell. You know, that's very good. And when you were talking about some of the places you came from, I remember uh, knowing you during some of those stages, like uh, when you were working as an EMS uh, person. I remember that. Um, when you, uh, your first book came out and you gave a speech about it. I was there for that. So I'm definitely a witness to your, uh, your development as a businessman and as a man in general. And so that is great. So speaking of that, um, I want to get into your background a little bit to see where you came from uh, in detail. But I also first want to touch on the topic we're here to talk about is mental health, anxiety, depression, specifically in men, but in general. So uh, talk to us a little bit about that. What is anxiety? To me, well, the book I wrote, the first book is Abundance, A Journey from Anxiety and Depression. So I feel I have a little knowledge on this topic to share. So anxiety, to me, is just hesitation. Anything we're doing for the first time, or even just anything that we hesitate towards doing, that could form into anxiety. If we don't react on it and move forward, we could either, that anxiety could push us back into our smaller comfort zone and we'll never be able to grow. And then we'll, we'll feel and we'll lack the confidence that we already have inside of us, just we didn't want to take that step forward. So it could like paralyze you just because you hesitate and not move forward. So anxiety is just a hesitation. And it's your decision to either to move forward or step back into your comfort zone. Sure. So. It's anxiety you describe as a uh, resistance or uh, so what causes that resistance? Why, why do people develop anxiety or resistance? Well, past traumas, uh, rejection, you know, not really building yourself up. You know, society kind of tears us down and doesn't make us believe in ourselves as much as we could because we see all these perfect people. And we don't realize how perfect we are, like how good we are as people. And we don't count our blessings and reaffirm ourselves on how awesome we are. Because we're all awesome, right? In our own way. We all matter. We all, we're all worth it. So that's what I would say. We have to reinforce ourselves. All right. I, I, well, I, I think so. So when you, in your book, or if you've uh, dealt with this, with uh, helping people out, what is, the, what is one of the first steps you take uh, when it comes to solving or moving past anxiety? To me, I like internal reflection, seeing where it comes from. Uh, so like just rest in your mind, but also how to overcome anxiety is set little goals, you know, uh, that you could achieve that's possible and just start hitting little goals because it'll hit a dopamine effect in your mind. Um, there's also, I would say, serve other people. You know, uh, when you take your eyes off yourself, you're actually able to then focus on others and you're more grateful. The more you give, the m it's more receiving, right? The more you give, the better you feel. So, um, you know, also join support groups, have a support group of people, participate in activities you enjoy, exercise moderately, you know, and all these things will help you actually overcome that. And to me, setting goals is very important. And also finding little techniques that help you relieve your mind. Maybe it be music, writing, exercise, like I said, really serving other people really help too. So really taking your eyes off yourself because we can get so overwhelmed in our own problems. But when we help other people, I feel it actually solves our problems. Now, very interesting. When we help other people, it solves our problems, kind of takes our mind off of our own issues and puts it in, in, in with helping others. And we kind of, our, uh, some of our issues may kind of become a little trivial once we are out there helping other people in the world through their problems. So that, that's pretty right. good. Absolutely. For sure. The one thing I would add on to that is you got to be mindful, though. You can't just go help a whole bunch of people and not be able to take care of yourself as well. But like, if you're beating yourself up, that's when you go do a nice service. Go treat to somebody to a cup of coffee, go drop off something to your neighbor. You know, something small that won't break you, but will help you not 
focus so much on you. You know, that's a great point that you mentioned, um, you know, because it's helping other people and being selfless, and, you know, it gets a lot of the hype, um, but really, you can only help yourself, you can only help others, you know, effectively if you make sure that you take care of yourself first. That's what self-care is, is all about. So how do we do that? What's taking care of ourselves first? What is self-care? How do we look after ourselves so we can help other people? Uh, make sure you got a source of income. I feel it's important in a society. I can't avoid that. You need to have some sort of income. Um, unless you're like living in a monastery or you're volunteering somewhere, right? So don't get me wrong. If you're living that lifestyle, that's awesome. You're doing a service as well. So wherever you are, you have to make sure you have resources. So resources, not necessarily just income. You have to have the resources to sustain life. I would also say um, taking care of your relationships. You know, I, I, a lot of people, they mess up their relationships because they look at other people and it may look down upon people because I've experienced this personally. I've actually done this. If I'm not doing what I say I'm going to do, I end up looking down at other people because I'm not living up to my highest potential. And so uh, take care of what you need to take care of. Set your goals. Make sure your relationships are good with your friends and family. I'm not saying you have to spend copious amount of time with them and go have a whole bunch of leisure time with them. Make sure they know you care. Make sure, you know, you communicate with them what you're doing. There's nothing to hide. So everybody's on the same page because you have a whole team of people that love you, a whole village that wants to see you win. And you have to believe that, though. Uh, and that's and taking care of your health your health, your wellness. So Body, Mind, and Soul is one of the companies I own. So you have to take care of your body, your mind. And I feel like when those two are taken care of, you could actually hear your soul. You could hear your intuition and you could follow through on your dreams. You know, in there you said something very important that jumped out at me. And that was uh, when your life is not together, you tend to judge other people uh, more harshly. Um, and that is one of the roots of being judgmental. When we're judging somebody else, it's a kind of an arrogant act. We don't have our thing together. Um, and so we feel uh, we displace our own disappointment and judge other people. And a lot of times when we judge other people, they may not have enough info to judge us back. So it's sort of like we're arrogant, like we're just looking at them. And, and so instead of going through that, that cycle, as you said, just make sure you take care of what you need to take care of, where, you, where your mind can be clear and open. Right, for sure. I agree with you 100%. And that's why I say set small goals. You know, grow your capacity. If you can't do as much as you're trying to set up on your plate, that's okay. Sometimes you got to shoot, you know, far so you could do a little bit, but be okay with it and then reprioritize, set it up for another day, or just lessen the amount of tasks you put for yourself until you could hit them regularly. Really set up your priorities. Absolutely. So, what do you do? Um, to take care of yourself? Do you have any particular practices that you find that helps you, like maybe meditation or whatever it might be to help you stay on point? Yeah, I had a really good meditation the other day. Uh, what I like to do really every day, I make it intentional, is to use these beads right here. And I, I work to say things I'm thankful for in each one, like I'm thankful for life, I'm thankful for food, I'm thankful and it just shifts your mind towards positivity because our mind could only think of one thought at a time and it's either going to be negative or positive. People say I have a thousand thoughts in my head, but it could only be one thought you're actually thinking about. So I use the gratitude to shift my mindset to the positivity of life because we have so much to be thankful for. Um, so to me, that's even higher than meditation, taking the time just to be grateful. Gratitude is such a powerful tool. And uh, just taking care of your health, your well-being, uh, uh, journaling. I like to listen to positive audios, things that will build my mind, read books, uh, meditate, exercise, yoga, walk, run. I'm not saying I'm perfect at doing everything, but one thing I work on sticking on is journaling at night, writing things I'm thankful for, and really practicing with these beads and practicing gratitude morning and night, shifting my mind to think positively. That's the most important thing to me. Mm, excellent, this is excellent. So you've developed these practices and you've developed uh, this craft over the course of years. Uh, at the beginning, you mentioned that, you know, you had some rough years in your earlier life. Um, 
where you were on the wrong side of things. So what, what was going on with you back then? What were you doing and how did you initially come out of it? So actually, wow, that's a deep question. I usually don't delve into this answer too much with people. No one really pokes at that, but I'll answer it. I love to answer it. I love to be open. Um, when I was about 15 to 17, I actually, you know, started smoking and things like that. I uh, met my father. You know, he's a good man, a good person, but I saw his ways of living and I adapted to it. I, I actually incorporated it into my own life and I actually went into, I elevated that and I made that lifestyle and started selling weed and things like that and maybe more, um, to be honest. And I just woke up. I got in a little bit of trouble and I said, Jay, you weren't, you weren't here to waste your life. You're not here to harm people. You're here to help people. And you're wasting your life. You're going to be a doctor. Wake up, wake up, wake up. You know, and like I had to wake up and I just got back on track in life. Um, so it was really the association, the influence, good people. They just had the wrong association and influence as well. They had some of the biggest hearts, those people I was with. Uh, but that's what we face. That's what we're influenced in doing. And I feel like if you say I'm bad, right? I wrote this in my second book. If you tell me I'm bad, I'm going to go do bad things. You know, I'm going to, because you're defining me. That's like saying someone's a bully. You're not giving them the room to grow and say that action they're doing is bullying, but you're a good person. You know, you're not reminding them that they're a good person and they just have to really look at their actions that they're committing to, you know, so. You know, that, that's beautiful. You know, I, that's, I don't hear that talked about enough where we define people by their actions and convict them as bad. Oh, Jay, you, you were caught smoking, so then you're bad. Oh, you were selling weed, so you're a drug dealer. So it, it's, we define people by their, uh, if you want to call it shortcomings or uh, mishaps or whatever you want to label it, and then we tend to convict their personality as a whole. And that doesn't help anybody. So I'm glad that you de dove into that because uh, with your perspective, because I think it's very important to separate the activity from the person. And I've noticed the same thing you've noticed, people on the streets, you know, young men on the streets, on the street corners, people that may have a, a, a record, a prison record. A lot of them are very good hearted people. A lot of them are very talented, uh, talented young men. A lot of them have good hearts, a lot of them do what they can to actually take care of things, but they're just doing stuff that maybe they were- They would do it. Yeah, they, they were just doing things. And we all do things. I have a past, you know, I've done things uh, that weren't always pretty. And so a lot of us have those pasts as men and it's important not to define yourself as that. And it's important for others not to define you as that if they want to help you grow. Yeah, I see the busy businessman. He's probably doing what society thinks is great. And I don't disagree that he's doing something great. But I've seen him too busy because he's such a busy businessman that he doesn't make time for his family or even his neighbors. But I've seen people that, you know, sell a little bit of weed. And they're the kind of guy that will actually go help somebody up to the fourth floor with their groceries. They'll help the old lady. They'll take time to slow down. You know, so I agree with you. You know, some of them have the biggest hearts and it's on both sides. Everywhere there's good and bad, you know, anywhere you are. Well, yeah, absolutely. I'm not, you know, suggesting I, everyone has good and bad, but I like the, I like this thing that you brought up because it, it does need to be spoken about more. A lot of these people we call miscreants, they just are going through stages or they have some scarring or they're repeating a pattern of some sort, but that doesn't wow. make them bad people. You, you have a lot of great insight. I agree with you hundred percent then. Absolutely. I think that's great. So, all right. So how did you, I know you touched on it a little earlier with your friend as the life coach kind of bringing you out of it, but really what, what was your personal motivation to moving into this life of abundance? Working with the monks, uh, practicing gratitude really helped shifting the mindset from an employee to an entrepreneur. And if I'm going to really go help the world, because I felt so grateful to be able to have food, to be able to have shelter and all these little necessities that we have. And I'm like, how does the world, how do other people not have it? You know, we have such an abundant world. Why do people not have food? Why do people not have homes? Why do people not have clothes? 
I don't think that's fair. We're all one. I feel like every one of us are one. We're, we're all the same. So we need to like figure out a way to actually do that. And I hope my words just could do that, right? And then people could open up their mind. But I'm also creating my wealth so I can fund these projects and do what I need to do to actually have those things come to fruition. So everyone has a certain standard of life. I'm not saying I'm against capitalism and people growing their wealth because that creates innovation. That creates change, right, for the better. I'm just saying everyone should have a standard of living. And I'm so grateful to have that. At the same time, I'm going to enjoy myself, but if we're going to do something in life, let's work a little harder, right? So it could be a little more of a contribution to the world. You know? Yeah, absolutely. So um, if someone's watching this program and they're ready to move into abundance, putting aside some of their anxiety and kind of living more holistically, uh, such as you do, what will be the very first steps for someone who's very new to this to do? I would say delve into your mind. Um, you know, maybe journal. M find out what your meditative practice is for you, right? So a meditative practice is just something you focus on. It could be cooking. It could be cleaning. It could be something that singles out and kind of focuses your mind so you don't have to think of so many thoughts because we really just overwhelm our mind so we can never change. Right. If we're overwhelming our mind with so many thoughts and we don't take that time to center ourselves, we'll never move forward. Uh, we'll just be stuck. So I believe you need to figure out what that meditative practice is for you. Right. Exercise, gratitude, meditation, yoga, cooking, cleaning, whatever you like. Right. Find something you like that really will take your mind off everything else. And then also, I would say add into that, you know, create some routines where you can make this part of your lifestyle. Make sure you make time for it. I could I could tell a whole bunch of things. I really think people should find their purpose in life. It's not that hard. It doesn't have to be something so copious or so huge. You need direction, though. You need to know where you're headed, where you're going. Because if you don't, you're going to get dissuaded, and you'll never move forward. If you don't have a reason to change, why would you move forward? Why would you change? You need to know why you want certain things so you could want to change. That's the only way things are going to change. You have to know what you want so you have a direction to move forward. It could just be to be happy, right? Just know why you want certain things. And I think journaling will help that. And I also like what you said about meditation, because often I hear, oh, well, I can't meditate and I don't know how to do that. Well, you know, meditation is different forms. It really is just a practice of mindfulness and being totally focused in the moment that you're in. It's not really sitting Indian style with your fingers on your temples, although I could be that way. Uh, but really meditation for the average person really is just what you said. It could be focusing on a cookie, cleaning, um, or even silence. I love active silence. I love being in active silence. So whatever it is, what you, even going out in nature, running, all these things can be forms of meditation. Nice, man, I love it, yeah, exactly. Absolutely. So, you know, your big thing, as well as moving past anxiety and depression, um, is financial independence. And so what, what about that? What can someone do as first steps to start being financially independent? Well, first, you got to know what you want, because if you don't know what you want, then you won't be financially independent because you're going to let somebody else control your life. Society is going to control you. Don't get me wrong. You may need a job. You may need to do certain things, right, to take care of your responsibilities. But look outside of that nine to five and see what you could do with your time. A lot of people go home and numb their mind. They watch TV. They scroll on Instagram and Facebook. You know, I think about what we're doing right now. We're taking our personal time to actually share stuff and grow our mind. Because the more we give outside to other people, the more it comes back to us. So what we give out is what we're receiving. I would say, you know, maybe find an endeavor where you could grow yourself personally, find an outlet where you could make money. Some people say find your passion, right? Yeah, you could go upon your passion and figure out something out of that. But I also say find something that works. Find something that you could make money, that you may not have to go in debt to do it. And because I don't teach people to go in debt. 
and little things that because our society is a thirty thousand dollar debt average for per person, right? So, like, work a way to find a way to actually increase your income and save your money, budget your money. A lot of people they let their money slip past them. They say, "Oh, I don't make a lot of money, so I don't have to budget," right? So why? You have to budget more than anybody else. You have to take control of your finances. You can't wait for, oh, I'm going to wait till I hit the lottery. You got to become the lottery. You got to find that opportunity that will change your life forever. So that's what I would say, you know, maybe find an opportunity. But really, outside of your nine to five, start thinking, how could I create what I want? What do I want? And figure out a path to go there. And when you find something that may not look like what you want, right, and it may not look like the path or the vehicle that you were expecting. If it's going to help you with your vision and it's not going to break God's laws or man's laws or interfere with any religious beliefs or practices, I suggest you try something outside of your comfort zone and grow yourself as a person and go achieve something to have the life you want. Mm, all right. Good stuff. That's That's really good stuff that you're talking about. And it definitely is important to not underestimate your own finance. Oh, I'm not rich, so what do I have to spend? Well, you can start making a budget no matter what you have in your account. You can start practicing discipline and looking for more ways to grow your income incrementally, just what you have right now. Um, and I also say that, you know, you don't, you, people's passion doesn't always mean that the passion will be their job, because I think people get this wrong. Oh, what's my passion? You think that you're going to be doing that as a career. No, sometimes your career can be separate from your passion. But I do encourage people to like what they're doing. Not, it doesn't necessarily have to be your passion. Your passion could be something else. But knowing how to do something and enjoying it are two different things. And if you don't enjoy what you're doing, at least for me, it's not going to get done well. Yeah, for sure. And it's all, to me, the biggest thing in life is attitude. So you choose to be happy no matter what you're doing. Like nothing I do, I'll clean up, you know, poop. And I know my bigger purpose. So the poop is insignificant, you know? So I'm just gonna be happy with my attitude towards life and everything else will be okay. Cause I know where I'm headed to. That's good. That's good. Yeah, so, so even if you are doing something that may be a drag, don't focus on that. Focus on the why you're doing it. Let your happiness be centered around why you're doing it. So good point, good point there. Um, sure. All right, so how can people uh, read your book, get your book, learn from your book and become uh, less anxiety prone and more abundance prone? Nice, man. Well, they could get it. They could just uh, Google me. My name is Jay Sukmanan, J-A-Y, last name S-O-O-K-N-A-N-A-N. You could also Amazon me. Uh, you could search up the book title. It's Abundance, A Journey from Anxiety and Depression. We have Facebook is Jay Sukhnanen. Uh My Instagram handle is jfaith512. And there's so many different ways. And one of our businesses where you can find our number and contact information as well is called Body, Mind, and Soul, bms.com. And the work number is 516-453-5190. And that's pretty much it. All right. All right. Well, thanks for coming on the program, uh, Jay. It was certainly good to interview you and get to talk to you about all of these issues. And, um, you know, I'm glad to see that you are continuing to develop who you are and move further into a holistic lifestyle and abundance. That's excellent to see. Thank you, brother. Well, it was a pleasure. It's always great to connect with you. I love that we met through Toastmasters because that was actually a big light for me. It created a lot of positivity into my life. And look, you're showing up again in my life because we are lights and we are here to create a change in the world. And thank you for sharing what you're sharing with men in general and just the world because this will help anybody. So you're a great person. Everyone I know loves you and we're thankful for you. Thank you very much, sir. <laughs> I definitely appreciate that. And um, certainly when other things occur with you, we might have you back on the program to show everyone what you got. Thank you, Dennis. Have a great day, guys.
If you'd like to be a guest on the Core Confidence Life podcast, just fill out our application by going to coreconfidencelife.com slash guest. That's coreconfidencelife.com slash guest. We appreciate you and all your feedback. So to give us comments about the podcast or anything else, just send a message to Dennis at coreconfidencelife.com. That's Dennis at coreconfidencelife.com. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and all the social media outlets, of course, at Core Confidence Life. I'm your host, Dennis, from New York City, giving you higher consciousness, lower stress, hard-hitting manhood issues, with just a side of cornball humor.